that's what it says here. End live video. Oh, perfect. I think I am live. I hope I'm live. If I've done this right. Yes. It says I am live. Hello, everybody. And welcome to NSK TV. It's one o'clock, which means that we are live. Um, and uh, my name's Craig. I'm going to do some close-up magic for you. We're just going to wait a couple of seconds for people to arrive. But yeah, for those of you uh, that don't know me, my name's Craig and I am from Nonstop Kids Entertainment and we are live right here. We go live at one o'clock every single day of the week. So Monday through, Saturday, uh, Monday through Sunday, we are live um, doing different things. You know, sometimes we're baking, sometimes we're doing science, sometimes we're doing maths. Today, we're doing magic. And we're not just doing any old type of magic, we are doing close up magic. So. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited as well. I can see that there's a couple of people that are watching. So I think, I think we're about to begin. I think I'm going to crack on and hopefully we'll build up an audience ahead of time. So let me explain something to you guys. So what I'm about to do, what you're about to see me do right now is close up magic. Now close up magic is magic that's done close up right in front of people's eyes and in their hands, okay? So this is close up magic. So if you wanna come really close to your screen to watch me, you are more than welcome to come really close to the screen. Hi Rich, just seeing Rich is on here. Hi Rich, how you doing? So um, if you wanna come really close to the screen, you can. And I'm gonna try in the next few minutes to show you magic with as many different props as I can. And I promise you, I promise you there will not be at any point any card tricks. I'm not going to do a single card trick. We're going to try and do some other stuff, but we're not going to do any card tricks. And in fact, I'm going to start off with one of these. Now, you might have seen one of these before. You might not. Let me come close to the screen so I can show you. This is an invisible purse. Now, the whole thing's not invisible. Uh, just, the, just the bag of the purse. If the whole thing was invisible, you'd never find it. But the, the bag of the purse is invisible, which means that anything inside the purse is invisible as well until you take it out. And when you take it out, it becomes visible. Now, I'm going to show you how that works. And it's kind of really simple. Watch really carefully, don't blink. All I have to do is take the purse, open up the purse, reach in, and when I do, anything in there becomes visible when I take it out. In this case, a tomato. Now, I know that there's some people watching this right now that are thinking, well, hang on a minute, that's weird. How can you pull a tomato out of an invisible purse? And you're right, it is weird, but it gets weirder. You see, if I take the tomato, squeeze it tightly, take the purse, wave the purse over the tomato, when I do, the tomato disappears travels invisibly and goes right back inside the purse. Like, I don't understand this, this confuses me. So if it confuses me, I'm pretty sure it'll confuse you. Now I can do this over and over again. I can keep making that tomato disappear and I can make, keep making it go inside the purse. But I wanna go one step further. So I want to watch the tomato very carefully. I'm gonna put it into my pocket. And then at the tips of the fingers, I'm gonna take the purse. I'm just going to open up the purse, reach in with the tips of the fingers, and when I do, the tomato comes back. I told you, it's weird. But what I haven't told you is there's more than one tomato in the purse. I mean, there's that one, obviously, but there is more than one tomato in the purse. Uh, you can't see the other one until you pull it out, and that's the second tomato, which is good because I need to do two, I need two tomatoes to do the two tomato trick. What you're about to see right now, guys, is the two tomato trick. Now, I'm going to put this, uh, this purse away. We don't need it right now. And you do the two tomato tricks, so your job is to keep an eye on the two tomatoes, watch and don't blink. Now I'm going to take one tomato, put one tomato over there. I'm going to hold one tomato over here, I'm going to touch my thumbs together. When I do, this tomato disappears from here, travels invisibly up in the air, six somersaults, and lands over there. Kind of weird, right? Now, when I do this, people turn around to me and they say, Craig, because that's my name, Craig. They say, Craig, I think I know what's going on there. What happens is that when you touch your thumbs together, you throw the tomato in the other hand, which makes sense. That's logical, but I don't do that. And to prove it to you, I'll do it again, but I won't touch my thumbs together. This tomato goes here, this tomato goes here, no touching of the thumbs, I just go up and down. That's all I do, I just go up and down. And when I do that, tomato disappears from there, travels invisibly right over to there. I know, it's crazy. Let's see if we can go one step further. I'm gonna do it on the count of 10. Now look, there's nothing in my hands, there's nothing up my sleeves, so I'm gonna do this on the count of 10. You know exactly what's gonna happen, watch. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Still works. This is weird. I mean, this is the weirdest thing I know I've ever seen. But let's see if we can go one step further. I said this is going to be interactive, and it is going to be interactive. So let me see if I can try something. I'm going to put one tomato in my pocket. That's one tomato in my pocket. 
and I'm going to put one tomato in my hand. Remember, one in my pocket, one in my hand. How many in my, ha how many in my hand? Uh, you might be thinking two. Maybe I've cheated. You might be thinking ten. But I've got to tell you right now, guys, there's three. And the reason there's three is because it's called the three tomato trick. You see, you might have got that if I told you the name of the trick before the trick began. But let me tell you right now, the name of this trick is the three tomato trick. It uses three tomatoes. So let me do it again. Now you know the name of the trick. One tomato goes in my pocket. One tomato goes in my hand and one tomato goes in my pocket. Now, how many in my hand? All you have to do is let me know. Uh, how many do you think? Well, you know what? You might be thinking one. You might be thinking two. You might be thinking three. You might be thinking ten. But guys, you got to remember the name of the trick. It's called the three tomato trick because there's always three tomatoes. Now, I know some of you out there were thinking, oh, maybe there's four, maybe there's five. Look, spoiler, it's the three tomato trick. So I'm going to do this one last time. You know the name of the trick. I can't give you any more advice right now. One tomato goes in the pocket, like that. One tomato goes in the hand, like that. One tomato goes in the pocket, like that. I can't get fairer than this. How tomatoes in the hand? Let me know. Let me know how many do you think? You might think 10, 9, 8, 7. You might think 6. You might think 5. You might think 4. Most of you will think 3, maybe 2, maybe 1. I've got to be honest with you, there were no tomatoes. The whole thing was in your imagination. All I have are two empty hands. And that is magic. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. That is exactly what I do. I can see a few people are watching. Wow, we've got Craig Newton in the house. Hello, Craig. How are you? Rob Harper as well. Wow, we've got, like, legends of magic watching this. Um, guys... What you just saw there was magic. Magic with an invisible purse. But I've only got started. You see, I'm going to go one step further right now. I, I have something over there that I think that you're going to love. Let me go and grab it for you. I have some rope. Let me move my little table out of the way. I'm going to show you something with some rope. Now, I, I want you to have a good look at this. There's three pieces of rope here. This first piece is a tiny little piece of rope. This is piece of rope number one. Tiny and little and small. This piece of rope here is a medium-sized piece of rope. Uh, that's piece of rope number two. And this piece of rope here, this is a big piece of rope. This is piece of rope number three. Three pieces of rope. Now, if you're here, you can examine them. You're not here, so you're just going to have to trust me. But I am going to tell you what I'm going to do before I do it. Magicians aren't meant to do this, but I am. I'm going to tell you exactly what happens with this trick. The idea is very simple. I'm going to try and show you the impossible. I'm going to try and make three pieces of rope all different lengths become the same size. So your job is to watch the small, the medium, and the large piece of rope. They're all going to become the same size. The small piece will be the same size, the medium size piece, and that will be the same size, the large piece. It happens when I blow and then shake. And as I shake, you can see that those three pieces of rope slowly begin to morph into three pieces of rope exactly the same size. So in other words, this first piece of rope, this is piece of rope number one, this is now the same size as piece of rope number two, which is the same size as piece of rope number three. Now the problem with this trick, and there is a problem with this trick, the problem is I have three pieces of rope. I have three pieces of rope and you guys, you have two eyes. So let me get rid of one of the pieces of rope. That will make it easier for you to follow. Well, we have now two pieces of rope and I want you guys to watch those two pieces of rope very, very carefully and do not blink for a second. You see when I blow? They melt together into one long piece of rope, which is pretty cool. But most people that are watching this right now are saying, well, do it again. I didn't know what was going to happen. Magicians aren't meant to repeat a trick because the first time it's entertainment, the second time it's educational. But I'm going to do it again for you. This time you know exactly what's going to happen. Now watch. In order to do it again, I'm going to cut the rope in two. Now, I don't have scissors, but I don't need scissors because I have scissor fingers. These fingers are the sharpest fingers in the world. Let me show you how sharp these fingers are because they're ridiculous. Look, all I have to do is touch my scissor fingers to the middle of the rope. And as I do, I can cut it into two scissor fingers. I have to be very careful when I go to the toilet. But now I've got the two pieces of rope. I can do it again, guys. I want you to watch those two pieces right down. I'm going to squeeze the ends together. And as I do, they melt into one long piece of rope. Now, I'm going to tell you how this works. I shouldn't tell you how it works. But I'm going to tell you how it works. It's very, very simple. I only have one piece of rope, not two. And what I do is I hold the ends in one hand, I hold the middle in the other, and I make the ends of the middle change places so quickly, it looks like two pieces of rope. Now, I, tell, I can tell you don't believe me, so I'm going to prove this for you. Watch. I'm going to hold the ends over here. I'm going to hold the middle over here. I'm going to make the ends of the middle change places on three. Watch this. One, two, three. Thank you. 
Okay, you're probably not impressed. <laughs> Look, let me do it for real. Look, you take the first end, pull it into your hand. When you blow, first end jumps over there. I'll do that again. You take the second end, you pull that one into your hand, you blow. Second end jumps over there. When the ends are over there, the middle's over there, the ends in the middle have changed places. I know it's a miracle, isn't it? Just a miracle. But you know what? That's not good enough for Facebook. That's not good enough for people that follow non-stop kids on Facebook. I have to go further. So I will try and do the impossible. I will pull the ends off the rope. What, really? Yes, I'm not kidding. I'm actually gonna take the ends of the rope and pull them off. Watch on three. One, two, three. And that's where the ends come right off the rope. Look, we've just got a middle over here now. Got a middle over here, got the ends over here. This is not something that you see every day. So the only way that I can fix this is by putting the ends back on. Look, I'll get the perfect spot. Perfect spot is right there. Now I'm gonna go really close to the camera so you can see I'm not cheating. Watch this, you just wrap the ends over the rope right there. Now you can see them right there, balanced on the rope. It looks like this, one, two, three. And just like that, the ends go right back on the rope, leaving us with one long piece of rope. Now the only way that we can get better than that is going back to the way we were at the very, very beginning, if you remember. At the very, very beginning, we had three pieces of rope. In order to get three pieces of rope, I need my scissor fingers. I need to cut right there, that's one. That's two. And that's three. Three pieces of rope. And we're back to the way that we were at the beginning, except that at the beginning, we had three pieces of rope that were all different sizes. And these are all the same size. So I'm not really back to where I was at the very beginning. If I wanted to be back to the way I was at the very beginning, I have to make these all different sizes. So just for you guys, one, two, three. And just like that, we have the small piece of rope. We have the medium sized piece of rope. We have the long piece of rope. I'm back to the way I was. And that is the miracle with the three pieces of rope. And I can see that we've got a few more people watching now. Wonderful. Very, very exciting. If you've just joined, and I can see a few of you have, welcome to Nonstop Kids Entertainment. Welcome to one o'clock. Welcome to one o'clock on a, um, on, well, every day of the week, really. One o'clock every day of the week, we do magic, and I'm doing some close-up magic for you today. And I said at the beginning of this live, I was going to do magic with as many different things as I can now. I've only got a certain amount of time, but so far I have managed to do magic with, um, uh, with an invisible purse, with tomatoes and with rope. And I promised I wouldn't do any card tricks. Um, let's see if we can do magic with a couple of silk handkerchiefs. I want you to watch because I'm going to show you a really cool trick right now. And this is a really cool trick. This trick is all about films. Now, I I'm guessing that a lot of people watching this like watching films. I like watching films. My favourite film is a film called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now, if you haven't seen Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, it's about a weird guy called Willy Wonka who owns a chocolate factory. He invites some kids to go walk around the chocolate factory and one of them is a guy called Charlie. Great film. Now, there's a bit in the film where uh, Willy Wonka takes a massive chocolate bar, puts it into a machine, pulls a handle, presses a button, the chocolate bar disappears in a million pieces, flies up in the air in a billion pieces, uh, then it flies invisibly across the room, it lands inside the TV, and Charlie reaches into the TV, pulls out the chocolate bar. It's an amazing part of the film. And I'm going to try and do that live, right here on Facebook. I'm going to try and do that same trick. Now, I don't have a TV, um, which is a bit of a problem. But I do have a solution. You see, I'm going to improvise. Instead of a television, I'm going to go one step further. Instead of a television, let me just grab what I need. Wait there for a minute. There we go. One of these and one of these. Instead of a television, I'm going to use these. Two blue handkerchiefs. This one here is blue handkerchief number one. This one here is blue handkerchief number two. These are going to be our TV. How are two blue handkerchiefs like a TV? Simple. I'm going to tie them together with a double knot, I should point out that I used to be a Cub Scout, and therefore I am awesome at tying knots. There we go. There's our TV. You see, I'm gonna have the two blue hankies tied together. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a different colored hanky, a, a red one, that's gonna be our chocolate bar, and I'm gonna make the red hanky disappear, and it's gonna appear tied in between the two blue hankies, and that's gonna be like the chocolate bar disappearing and going inside the TV. That's, that's the plan. So you guys need to watch very, very carefully. I'm gonna take these two tight blue hankies and I'm gonna keep them on display the whole time so you can watch them. I'm gonna put them there. Please do not blink for a second. If you have to, put your, uh, your fingers like that so you're not blinking. Watch those two blue hankies. Now, I have a different colored hanky. I have a red one. One red hanky, perfect. Now what am I gonna do with this red hanky? Well, very, very simply, I'm gonna make it disappear. I'm gonna put it into the hand, okay? 
It's going to go all the way in the hand. And we're going to make it disappear. Now, to do this, got kids that are watching this, and adults as well, I need you to learn the magic. Because you can't do this without the magic. The magic is very simple. When I say wiggle your fingers, you wiggle your fingers as fast as you can. When I say wiggle your toes, you wiggle your toes. When I say wiggle your ears, you wiggle your ears. When I say wiggle your nose, you wiggle your nose. Magic words at the end of Hocus Pocus. And then hopefully, the handkerchief will disappear. Let's give it a shot. Everybody, wiggle your fingers. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle your ears. Wiggle your nose. Everyone shout, Hocus Pocus. You did that so well. And now, over here, the handkerchief is invisible. Now, I can see it because I'm a magician. I have magic powers. You guys aren't going to be able to see it because you're not magicians. But you have to trust me. It is there. You just can't see it. It's there. You just can't see it. But it is there. You're going to have to trust me. It is there. You just can't. Well, hang on a second. I see comments. You can see it. Oh, my gosh. How's my acting? Really? Oh, wow. Okay, look, I'll tell you what. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. But this time... You're going to have to wiggle a lot faster. This is only going to work if you're going to wiggle a lot faster. So let's try this again. You're going to have to wiggle a lot faster. Let's try this again. Here we go, everybody. Oh, wiggle your fingers. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle your ears. Wiggle your nose. Wiggle your legs. Wiggle your hair. Wiggle your head. Wiggle your belly. Wiggle your chest. Wiggle your teeth. Wiggle your shoulders. Wiggle your elbows. Wiggle your knees. Wiggle your bum. Wiggle everything all at the same time. Shout, hocus pocus. Amazing. Well done, kids. And let's just check to make sure it's worked. Yeah, it's invisible. I will show you. Look. Da, da, da. Thank you. Okay, I can tell you're not impressed. I'll open up my hand. Ta da! Okay, I can tell you're still not impressed. Uh, I'll open up the other hand. There you go. Nothing in the other hand. No? Nothing in this hand. Nothing in it. You guys are too clever for me. Look, I tell you what, I'll open up both hands at the same time. Oh, like this! Look, it's vanished. It's traveling invisibly in a million pieces, just like in Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. And it's gonna land right here tied in between the two blue hankies. I'm going to pull on the count of three and hopefully that red hanky is tied in between the two blank blue hankies. Let's give it a go. One, two, three. <laughs> really worried. One, two, three. Give it a pull and there it is. Tied in between the two blue hankies. You guys are absolutely amazing. Look at what you did. Wow. That's so cool. Where am I at? How long have I been going? I feel like I've been going forever. Hello, Danny. Somebody or other. Oval, hello, how are you? How are you doing? Let's have a look. Um, I think I've got time for one last trick. I'm going to do one last trick for you guys, but if I'm going to do one last trick, I'm going to make it one of the best tricks in the world. And to do this, I'm going to need a couple of bits and pieces. I'm going to have to take my magic wand. We'll need that. We'll need this. We'll need this. Let's do that. Right. There we go. One last trick and if we're going to do one last trick i should do one of the best tricks in the entire world guys let me explain something about this trick this is called the miracle of the cups and balls now this trick is over three thousand years old this trick is so old that if you ever get the opportunity to go to egypt and you look in the pyramids you'll see hieroglyphs and drawings of people performing this trick thousands and thousands of years ago this trick is so old that it was described in the very first book published on magic called The Discovery of Witchcraft by Reginald Scott, which was published in, I think, 1584. This is a rite of passage for magicians, and all magicians should be able to perform this amazing trick. And I'm going to perform it for you right now. So guys, I want to watch and don't blink as I perform for you the miracle of the cups and balls. Guys, to do this trick, you need three cups. Now, these are solid brass cups. That's cup number one. That one there is cup number two. This one here is cup number three. Three solid brass cups. Now, as well as the cups, we also need something else. That's why I got it earlier. We need a magic wand. Now, you're probably wondering, why does Craig need a magic wand? He's not been using one up until this point. There's two reasons. One, this magic wand makes a really cool noise when you bang the top of the cups. Like, just a really cool noise. But the other reason is, this trick is called the cups and the balls. And you need little red balls. You need three little red balls. And luckily, this wand can make balls appear. If I take the, the wand and push it through the hand, tap the back of the hand, when I do, a little red ball appears. That there is a little red ball. And that little red ball sits on top of a cup like that. And I've got to tell you guys, every single time, and I mean every single time I tap, I get another little red ball. Now, this one here, I should tell you, is the magic little red ball. This is the one that penetrates through the middle cup to the table below. We'll get back to that in a little bit. But the third one is always right there on the end of the wand. If I just snap, take it off, throw it up in the air, there it is over there. So now, guys, we are ready to begin. We've got one, two, 
three cups, three balls, a magic wand, a lot of magic, two hands, ten fingernails, ten knuckles, no sleeves, and I talk fast. Watch very carefully. The idea is that I take ball number one, I tap it right here with the wand, and when I tap the front and the back of the hand, the ball disappears completely. Maybe you missed that, I'm going to do that again with this one here, this is ball number two, it goes the same way, you tap the front and the back of the hand, and when you do, this ball disappears completely. Two balls gone, one last ball left, this one here is the hardest one, you get to see it right up until the very last second, nothing happens until I pull the wand out the other side, and when I do, that ball disappears completely. You're probably wondering, where do the balls go? Well, all I have to do is tap like this, tap like this, and tap like this. And when I do, the first ball goes back underneath this cup. The second ball goes back underneath this cup. And the third ball goes back underneath this cup. Now, I know you're thinking, you think, well, that's pretty good. But I know how Craig did that. He was using sleight of hand. He was holding the balls in his hands. So, obviously, at some point, he did something. And that's logical. But I didn't use sleight of hand. And to prove this to you, I'm going to do it again. But I'm going to isolate the balls underneath the cups. Put one ball underneath each cup. Now I cannot get close to the balls. I can't touch the balls. I can't manipulate the balls. They are encased in brass and yet still I will make the balls jump. I just do this, I do this, and I do this. And believe it or not, this ball has now gone from underneath this cup. This ball has now gone from underneath this cup. And over here we have all three balls. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, okay, Craig, okay, you've proved you can make the balls jump around. What else can you do? Well, I can actually make these solid balls go th straight through solid cups. Now, the balls are solid, the cups are solid, and yet I can make the balls and the cups penetrate each other. It looks like this. If you lay the cups out on the table, and then you put one ball on top of the bottom cup, you just cover it up like that, you tap, and the tap is important. When you tap, that first ball sinks down through the solid brass to the table below. Now you might have missed that, most people do the first time I do it, so I'll do it again. The second ball goes right there, you just cover it up, you tap, and when you do that second ball penetrates down through the solid brass to the table below. One final ball. Watch the last ball, you know exactly what's going to happen. It goes on the bottom cup, I tap, but when I tap that second ball sinks down through that bottom cup to the table below. Now, it's good, but there is a problem, right? And I'm going to admit there's a problem right now. It's the same problem that we had with the rope trick. You see, with the rope trick, you couldn't follow what was going on because I had three ropes and you have two eyes. With this trick, it's the same thing. I have three cups, I have three balls, you've got two eyes. I'm going to get rid of one cup. I'm just going to use two cups. I'm going to get rid of one of the balls. I'm going to get rid of that ball. Now, we've just got two balls, two cups and a lot of magic. So it's a lot easier to follow. Now watch, I'm going to put this ball here, I'm going to put this ball here, and again, I'm not going to touch the balls, and yet I'm going to make that ball go from there over to there. Watch, if I just tap and tap, hang on, yep, it's gone from there, yep, it's appeared over there, it's a miracle. Of course, that's the first part of this amazing trick, if I do that, now it jumps back. Still not impressed, <laughs> I can tell you're not impressed. Look, I'll do it for real, look, you tap and you tap, and it goes from there over to there. Told you, see, I wouldn't lie to you. I can't believe you thought for a second that I would lie to you. I wouldn't lie to you, but you know what the problem is? There's still too many cups. There is, there's too many cups. So let me get rid of a second cup. Now, we just have one cup. We have one cup, and you know what? We'll just use one ball. We won't even use the magic wand. We'll get rid of that ball. We'll only use one cup and one ball, no magic wand. Now this is easy to follow. There is no way you cannot focus on what's happening because with one ball and one cup, you know exactly where to watch right here. But please don't blink for a second because in the next 30 seconds, there's going to be 10 moments of magic. In other words, there's going to be a moment of magic every three seconds. Watch this. Here we go. You take the ball. When you take the ball and squeeze, the ball disappears and it goes right down underneath the cup. Now, in case you missed that, there's an instant replay. It goes underneath the cup. Now, I can keep doing this all day and keep making it go underneath the cup, but I prefer to penetrate it down through the bottom of the cup. I can also do it this way and have it go through the bottom, or I can have it go through the back of the hand just like that and have it go underneath the cup. If I take the ball and blow, the ball, no, I'm serious, the ball disappears and goes right underneath the cup. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. What you need to do is you need to watch very carefully because with all of this magic, 
There's one thing that I've missed, which is a big finish. So I'm going to go for the big finish right now. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to break the rule of magic. The number one rule of magic is never tell the audience, what, the audience what's going to happen before it happens. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. One ball, three cups. I'm going to take this ball, put it in my pocket. I'm going to make it go underneath one of the cups. That is cup number one. That is cup number two. That is cup number three. And we'll go from left to right. So the first one, I just tap right there. And with any luck, look, there it is, underneath that cup. I told you, but you might have missed it. So the second rule of magic, never repeat the trick. I'm going to do it again. I'm just going to tap right here. And when I do, it goes underneath the cup. And I'm going to do it one more time, but I'm going to break the third rule of magic and tell you how it works. When I put it in my pocket, I flick it up the sleeve, across the chest, down near the sleeve, catch it in this hand. And as I lift up the cup, I have it go under. Look, let me show you. Here we go. Up, across, down. Any questions you're following this? Well, and that was a big finish, but that wasn't a big enough finish for Facebook. For Twitter, yes. Instagram, yes. IGTV, yes, but not for Facebook. I have to go one step further, and I will go one step further. I'll give you a finish that you'll remember forever. If I just tap like this, tap like this, and tap like this, you cannot get better than that finish because you cannot get better or bigger than a giant blue ball right there. You can't get bigger than a giant red ball right there. You can't get bigger than a giant yellow ball right there unless I give one last tap. And when I give one last tap, you have a real life oddness to goodness lemon right there. That's the lemon. That's the three balls. That's the big finish. That is the cups and balls. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Thank you very much. I see some hearts. I see some likes, and I really appreciate that. Uh, where am I from? I'm from the UK. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Hey, James. How you doing? I um, love James Samuel. Follow him. is amazing. Uh, how often do I do this live magic show? Well, we're, we're live on the Facebook page every single day at one o'clock, uh, buddy. So we got, but it's not always magic. Sometimes it's party games. Sometimes it's science. Sometimes it's maths. If Leona's on, it's probably wandering around the woods or something. I don't know. Every entertainer does something different. I am a magician. So when I go on, a lot of the time I do magic because I love magic. But there you go. So I did a rope trick. I did the classic cups and balls. I did, um, uh, I did the trick with the, with the tomatoes and the invisible purse. I think I pretty much covered the bases when it comes to magic. Now I'm doing another Facebook Live. I think it's next Tuesday. So I want you guys to, well, you should check out every single day, but if you like magic, I'm going to be doing another Facebook Live next Tuesday, and it's going to be very, very different. It's going to be a Facebook Live that I've never done before. It's going to be a Facebook Live, and all I'm going to be doing is magic tricks that I have created myself, okay? Uh, magic tricks I've created myself. This stuff I didn't create myself. The cups and balls have been around for years. The routine I did was by a guy called Michael Lamar. Um, the rope trick I did was by a guy called Richard Sanders. The uh, sponge ball trick I did was a guy called Albert Goshman. Um, so all of the tricks that I did weren't mine. There was somebody else's and I just performed them. Um, however, however, this trick, and, and the 20th Century Silks wasn't mine either. But, this, uh, but next Tuesday, I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live and it's going to be magic that I have created. And it's going to be all completely unique to me. So there you go. I've just answered your question there, buddy. It's going to be Tuesday. And I'm going to be doing another Facebook Live, and it's going to be all my own creation. So I want to hope you guys are going to follow it. You're going to check that out. So I want you to do two things for me before you leave. Number one, follow us on Facebook. That's really, really important. Follow us on Facebook and, and, and YouTube and all that fun stuff. And the other thing is, if you want to see the cups and balls, that trick I just did at the end, if you want to see that done better than I do it, you need to check out my son, Ryland. He's seven years old. He's got his own YouTube channel. Uh, just go on YouTube and type in Ryland, R-Y-L-A-N-D, Ryland, the kid magician. He puts videos up twice a week on a Thursday and a Sunday. And this Thursday, today, he's putting up a video of the cups and the balls and watching a seven-year-old do what I do, what, what I did with the cups and balls and watching them doing it better than me. It's insane, insane. So make sure you come back next Tuesday to watch me do my, uh, more magic. Make sure you check out Ryland's version of the Cups and Balls. Follow him on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. And guys, if you want a virtual party, you know where to go. www.nonstopkids.co.uk. Have a fantastic day, whatever it is that you're doing. And I'll see you guys again soon. Oh, it's actually next Thursday, not Tuesday. Oh, <laughs> apparently Nonstop Kids have just told me I'm wrong. Um, it's Thursday, James. I'm excited as well, but I've just been told by the office it's Thursday, not Tuesday. 
So make sure Thursday it's going to be all my own creations. So it's going to be very, very exciting. I'm going to be looking forward to it. So Thursday at one o'clock, you're from Massachusetts. I know Massachusetts. I've got my wife's family come from sort of the Boston area. So I know Massachusetts very well. You guys do good donuts. I love your donuts. So, um, yeah, join me again on Thursday. Magic, all my own creations. I'm going to blow you away with that. And make sure you check out Ryland's version of the Cups and Balls. Just go on YouTube, type in Ryland the Kid Magician. I'll be back very, very soon. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and all that fun stuff. I'll see you again. Thank you very much. Take care. See you soon. Bye.